The Red Sox are looking to trade their star outfielder, or maybe the Chris Sale trade is already a bust. I don't know. Let's talk about it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. We're about two months into the regular season so far, and it's been the roller coaster that most people expected this team to be. Well, kind of, right? I don't think anyone really expected this team to look like this come the beginning of May, but either way, these last two months have been a roller coaster ride, and I wanted to know what you guys were thinking. So I asked you what your hottest Red Sox takes were right now, and boy, did you guys deliver. So what we are going to do in today's videos, we're going to talk about these hot takes. We're going to go over what your opinions on the Boston Red Sox currently are. I'm going to break them down, talk about whether or not I agree or disagree with them and why, and how all All of these could indicate what Red Sox Nation is feeling right now. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. It just helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Don't forget, these episodes are always available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get podcasts. Link will either be in the description down below, or you can head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Seat Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so basically what I did is I asked you guys on YouTube and my followers over on Twitter what their hottest Red Sox takes were, and again, you guys gave us a ton, so we're going to try to get to as many as we can in this video. The first one comes in from Mike, who said the Red Sox trade Cutter Crawford to Detroit for Tariq Skubal. While it sounds like a really interesting idea and probably a pretty interesting trade to put together, I just flat out do not see this happening, so I'm going to have to disagree with this take. I think for starters, the Boston Red Sox probably aren't going to be looking to swap their sort of workhorse type starter that Cutter Crawford has developed into for a guy with a ton of talent, but a pretty decent injury history. And then from the Detroit Tigers point of view, I just don't see them thinking it's worth it to acquire Cutter Crawford for Tariq Skubal. So while it, I don't think it's going to happen, I do think it's a pretty interesting conversation, especially as we get closer towards the major league deadline. The second one comes in from Ballpark Buzz on Twitter, who says that Nico Cavada should be the platoon split with Garrett Cooper and honestly I'm not even really sure this is a hot take I think a lot of people would agree with you here ballpark Alex Spear did put out an article just a couple of days ago where he talked about why the Red Sox may not be super inclined to call up Nico Cavadas anytime soon it talked a lot about how he was really struggling with off speed pitches and the fact that so far this year while he has hit a ton of home runs he's not hitting it against high velo he's getting beat there as well so there are some concerns as to how that would play at the major league level but to be honest with you we're not seeing a ton of production from Dom Smith so I don't think it would be a bad idea I'm gonna agree with you I think it would be interesting to see what Nico Cavadas could bring to the Boston Red Sox especially if you're leaning into the youth movement why not dive fully in next we got Nibi who says Masataka Yoshida may be a bust I don't agree with you yet it's hard to make an overall assumption about a player especially when he hasn't been able to field his position with an injury and because he hasn't had a full season in Major League Baseball yet. We talked about why he could have struggled at the end of last year and I think there are some really valid reasons there. He got off to a bit of a slow start this season but he was picking it up before he got injured and overall it's a 109 OPS plus. Maybe it's not the superstar hitter that I think some people expected out of Masataki Yoshida but it really hasn't been terrible either. I think we're gonna have to wait and see as to a bigger sample size as to what Masataki Masataki Yoshida really is and whether or not it's worth it for the Red Sox to hold on to him. Ryan Martin said not having Justin Turner or Masataki Yoshida in the lineup is a primary factor in the Red Sox current offensive struggles. Absolutely, completely agree here. There have been so many strikeouts this year, especially in big situations, and I think a lot of that's due to the fact that the guys that you mentioned are either no longer on this team or on the injured list. I would also add Tristan Casas into that as well. I think having him in this lineup makes it a whole lot better, and I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of these guys just trying to figure out how to play at the major league level, right? Say Don Rafaela, Vaughn Grissom, even older players who just simply have not had a regular opportunity 
opportunity in a little bit. Romy Gonzalez, Garrett Cooper, Dominic Smith, like we just talked about, all are in that boat as well. And I think it's leading to that high percentage of strikeouts that we've seen. I do think there are players who are going to help with that. Garrett Cooper getting right is going to be a big part of it. Tyler O'Neill cutting down on the strikeout is going to be a big part of it. And Vaughn Grissom getting going is going to be a major part of it as well. So I don't know if that's going to be the same case the entire year. But for right now, absolutely 100% agree with this take. The Red Sox are in the hunt for a wild card spot at the deadline, says Versatility. And yeah, I completely agree. He also said it will be within five games. And I think right around there is right around where I would put them as well. What's going to be super interesting about this is how Craig Breslow handles the deadline. If they are four or five games back of a wild card spot, is this a team worth investing in in Craig Breslow's eye or do they go the complete opposite direction? And if they are closer to that, what does that look like? Who do they add? Do they go over the offensive side of things and say, hey, we need a better first base option on this team right now? Or do they focus on pitching and say, look, we're about to get into uncharted territory with a lot of our starters. It wouldn't be a bad idea to get some reinforcements into that rotation or into that bullpen to help mellow out those uncharted lands. We'll see how that works out. But yeah, I do think the Red Sox will at the bare minimum be considered in the conversation of a wild card spot come the trade deadline. Hurricane Rain says that if the Red Sox are buyers, Roman Anthony gets traded. If they are sellers, Jaron Duran gets traded. If they do neither, this team finishes finishes with the same record three years in a row. Overall, with this take, I disagree. There are parts of it I do agree with. The one thing I don't agree with fully is that they are going to trade any of their big three prospects. For better or worse, it feels as though the Red Sox have completely hedged their bets on these three guys. It's the reason the Red Sox aren't spending any money right now. It's the reason that the Boston Red Sox brought these guys to winter weekend. It's the reason they've been plastered over our timelines and on social media over the past year, right? These guys are what the Red Sox Sox think the future of the Boston Red Sox is going to be centered around or help center around. And I don't think either of these guys get traded regardless of how the Red Sox are doing at the deadline and whether or not they need a big player. However, there is a part of this that I would slightly agree with. And I think that is that there is a chance the Red Sox do end up trading one Jaron Duran. And it's not because I don't think he's a long-term solution here. It's because I think at some point the Red Sox are going to have to decide what the future of their outfield looks like. Right now, you've got Tyler O'Neill, William Abreu, Sedan Rafaela, Jaron Duran, Masataki Yoshida, and Rob Refsnyder who can all play the outfield. I think they've made their decision on Masa out there, but there's still not a lot of room when you do get Ron Roman Anthony up here at the big league level. They've made their decision on, say, Don Rafaela being in here for a long period of time. So that leaves sort of open-ended questions with Tyler O'Neill, Jaron Duran, and Will you Abreu. And I think they've got to choose at least one of those guys to move on from. And there is a distinct possibility here that Jaron Duran is the guy that they choose. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that solution. I just think it is possible. So I do agree with that. And for the third part of this question, yeah, you can't sit there at the deadline and do what you've done over the last couple of years which is essentially a net zero. You got to pick one side or the other in order to either help you in 24 or help you in 25 and beyond. This one comes in from Lord of Flames, which is pretty fitting for this video. He says, Cooper is doing so well. When Whitlock comes back, either him or Pavetta go into the bullpen. I don't think it would be Pavetta, but I actually do think there is a chance that the Red Sox look at this and try to limit Whitlock's injury risk by putting him in the bullpen. Cooper Criswell has done a fantastic job on the mound, but he is a five and dive player, right? That's essentially what he's been so far this year. Imagine a situation where the Red Sox put Whitlock in the bullpen and say, hey, look, after Criswell starts, he goes four and a third innings. You're going to give us three innings of shutdown baseball. On top of that, that could be a really deadly combination. But at the same time, too, I do still think Garrett Whitlock has the higher ceiling between the two players. It just all boils down to injury risk, and we'll see what the Red Sox decide. I ultimately disagree with this take, not because I think it's a bad one, but because I think that the Red Sox are going to put Whitlock back in this rotation. Have Chris Well end up being your sort of rotational depth piece that sits in the minor leagues, waiting for someone else to get hurt. I don't know if it's the right decision, but I do think that's the, that's the decision the Red Sox make. So again, 
disagreeing with this one. Jeff on Twitter says, Von Grissom is a move that has backfired so far. Trading sale was a huge mistake. And I don't think I could physically disagree with this take any more than I actually do. Chris Sale was fantastic for the Red Sox when healthy, but he was also really inconsistent, both with his health and with his performance. You had one year left on his contract, and what you got back was six years of a once top prospect. Now, Von Grissom has not been doing well at the major league level, but at the time of this recording, at the time that he decided to put out this take, Von Grissom had played eight games with the Boston Red Sox. We are talking about a singular week of production. Imagine judging a player's entire future off of eight singular games. Imagine going into work, having one bad week at work, and your boss saying, man, you know... <laughs> These next three years are going to be really, really rough for you because of this one bad week, right? It's just not a thing that ever happens. This is the exact type of thinking as to why people were getting upset and saying that Tristan Casas or Will You Abreu you were busts as well. This is absolutely, honestly, a terrible take. And we haven't even gotten to the fact that he said Chris Sale was a massive mistake, despite the fact that the Boston Red Sox have one of the best rotations in baseball right now. Again, at least at the time of this recording, I'm recording this a little bit earlier than normal as I'm in Florida right now enjoying a vacation but either way I wholeheartedly disagree with this and Von Grissom showing signs that he's going to heat up and heat up pretty quickly so Jeff no the last one on our list comes in from Thomas and he says Alex Cora will be fired before the season is over this is another one I strongly disagree with not because I think Alex Cora will be back next year but because of the fact that I believe that the Red Sox front office above Craig Breslow really likes Alex Cora I don't think they will see any reason to really fire him or let him go and I ultimately think the decision to be here beyond 2025 is going to rest in the hands of Alex Cora and Alex Cora alone I don't see any any world where Craig Breslow feels as though Alex Cora isn't the right man to man this ship, but I do see a world in which Alex Cora believes that he does not want to be here anymore, and I think that's totally possible, but I don't think it's possible the Red Sox fire him unless there's one situation that arises, and that is that Alex Cora demands a firing. He says, look, I want out. I want to start looking for a new job. I cannot do this anymore. Please do me the favor and let me go, which again, I just don't see happening. Happening. So I'm going to strongly disagree with this one as well. Overall, there's one thing that these hot take videos point to. It's the fact that Red Sox fans, we are extremely knowledgeable about our team. Everyone in here has really interesting takes and it leads to really interesting conversations. But what I also think this points to is that Red Sox fans are still trying to get their feet wet with this team. It's really sort of back and forth, right? There's a lot of negative, a lot of positive, and it all sort of lands somewhere in the middle. I think we as Red Sox fans are still just just trying to figure out what this team is and who this team could be. And to be honest with you, I think the Red Sox are still trying to figure it out themselves. So that's exactly what I think this hot take leads to. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What did you think? What did you think of these hot takes or anything you disagree with that I agreed with or agree with that I disagreed with? Let me know all your thoughts on the latest hot takes in the comment section down below. I apologize to those of you whose hot takes I could not get into this video. There were so many and I wanted to get to as many as as possible but I also didn't want this video to be an hour and a half long so I appreciate all of you for submitting your entries I promise you there will be more of these in the future as always if you made it to the end here don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already also make sure you guys have hit the like button as well it just helps these videos out a ton and would mean a lot to me don't forget always available in podcast form regardless of where you listen just go to your favorite app and look up Red Seat Radio thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the Red Seats